Hey guys, you all know about such thing as lead dichloride, which is a white powder used in manufacturing of some types of white paint. However, there is also lead tetrachloride that I'm going to talk about in this video. Lead tetrachloride can be acquired from chloroplumbic acid that results from bubbling chlorine in the solution of lead dichloride in hydrochloric acid. This setup for synthesis chloroplumbic acid includes a flask with potassium permanganate where we'll produce chlorine and then we'll feed it into another flask with lead dichloride and hydrochloric acid. So let's start our synthesis with adding hydrochloric acid to potassium permanganate. Chlorine that evolves as a result of the reaction flows into the flask with lead dichloride, where it oxidizes lead to oxidation stage plus 4, thus forming chloroplumbic acid. It's clearly seen by the color change of the contents of the flask. In about an hour, all of the lead dichloride dissolves in hydrochloric acid, and we get a light brown solution of chloroplumbic acid. Next step is cooling down the produced chloroplumbic acid and triethylamine solution in hydrochloric acid. Then we mix cooled down triethylammonium chloride solution and chloroplumbic acid, which makes the color change to lemon yellow due to the formation of triethylammonium hexachloroplumbate. After that, we bubble chlorine for another 15 minutes and filter out the precipitation. Then we wash the precipitate with isopropanol, followed by diethyl ether, and dry it in a desiccator. After all these steps are completed, we get dry gold yellow triethylammonium hexachloroplumbate crystals. To get lead tetrachloride, we add these crystals portion wise with storing in concentrated sulfuric acid poured into a sap funnel. A few minutes later, lead tetrachloride evolves in the form of yellow oil that gathers at the bottom of the sap funnel. Actually, lead tetrachloride is quite an unstable reagent, which is not surprising at all since it's yellow and there are very few reactions involving it, but I'll show you a couple anyway. Here you can see tiny bubbles forming in this yellow oil. This indicates lead tetrachloride decomposing into lead dichloride and chlorine under exposure to light. As well as in the light, lead tetrachloride decomposes quickly below room temperature. That's why the recently formed yellow oil has already gained a whitey shade and it's turning white completely quite fast. Take a close-up look at this process. Lead tetrachloride decomposes rapidly when heated, forming a cloud of poisonous lead dichloride.
The same occurs when lead tetrachloride contacts a hot surface. On contact with water, lead tetrachloride forms brown lead dioxide. Lead dioxide is a strong oxidizer. Hydrogen sulfide combusts on contact with it. To make the demonstration of this reaction as visual as possible, I'll pour liquid hydrogen sulfide out on lead dioxide. So I thought that lead tetrachloride might react violently with hydrogen sulfide too. But nothing remotely close to violent happened, and hydrogen sulfide just boiled away. By the way, the video about liquid hydrogen sulfide will be out soon on this channel, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Also, it would be a great help if you become a member of my Patreon like my most dedicated viewers did. It will help me a lot with the release of new videos. Well, I hope you like the synthesis of lead tetrachloride and this video all together. Feel free to leave your comments, I'll be glad to read them all. See you next video.